Okay. All right, cool. Okay. Hopefully the uh, the sound will be pretty good, but uh, yeah. So thanks, Kyle, for having us on here. You bet, man. Yeah, just thanks for popping in. Appreciate it. Because I'm about to work somebody out. Yeah, about to <laughs> do a little workout, surprise appearance. But uh, yeah, so what we got? What kind of questions do we got? Or what, um, what do we want to know? So the first one that we got was, what did you do to prep for your first show, and what was your what was your mindset going into it? All right, man. Be that, honest. I know. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. So bring it back. But uh, so the first show I did was 2015. Uh, I think it was the Cal. I want to say somewhere right around there, about May. Yeah. And man, I thought I, I thought I was ready. I thought I was ready to go. I got with with Reggie, um, probably about three to four weeks out. Yeah. And man, I got I got in the gym. I was like, man, I just I need to learn how to pose. I was like, I was I thought I was ready. And little be known, you know, I get in the gym and he makes me strip my shirt off and he's like, all right, let's see what you got. And uh, what'd you say? I said, man, you need to lose 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> 20 pounds. So, so it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt. So my mindset was definitely, you know, I, was, I thought I was ready. You know, there's, there's a difference. We say it a lot. You know, there's, there's looking good in the gym and then there's looking good on stage. That's huge. So I was, I, I was one of the best guys looking in the gym. Did not, did not transfer into, into the, into not the, the stage. not for the stage. But I also, you know, some of the things that I learned was a lot about nutrition and not necessarily, I mean, I'm certified in nutrition, but there's a whole different way of, of eating when it comes to bodybuilding tech training. So not just weight loss, not just getting in better shape, but if you want to do bodybuilding and be on the stage, there's a whole different type of, of training. So I was eating all wrong. You know, I was, yeah. you know, having too many carbohydrates. I was eating too many fruits. Uh, I mean, just, it's just totally different. Yeah, were, were you eating junk food or were you eating clean foods, but just the wrong way? I was eating clean foods. Oh, okay. Eating clean foods, but I had, I had high, uh, and clean junk food in there too. All right, fine. All right, all right, all right. So there was some junk food, but for the most part, I really thought I was eating pretty clean. And this is, and this is kind of like the evolution of what I've learned. And the key word, he said he thought he was eating clean. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's, huge. that's huge. That's huge. He thought he was eating clean. Eating, okay. Yeah, and I just, I wasn't, the timing wasn't right, you know, the amount of carbohydrates I was eating, the, the, you know, obviously the insulin spikes if you're eating, eating fruits and vegetables, eating fruits and things like that. So there's a, there's a number of things I just wasn't eating correctly and I thought I was eating correctly, which a lot of people do think they're eating correctly and they're not. And it, and it shows when you step on stage or it showed when I got with him about a month out and back in 2015. Mm -hmm. So, wow. So what was, so what was it that you did different? What, what did you have him do right so as, as, of course, as the years, because now we're talking like four years now. Yeah. We started out, he was 170 pounds. pounds. On weights. Yeah. On, on stage. stage. 170 pounds. On stage. Mm -hmm. So as we, as we go from year to year, from show to show, we're trying to, I'm trying to figure out what different mm -hmm. carbohydrates are going to work best for his body. Mm -hmm. So the main thing that we found out, I guess last year, mm -hmm. at the USA, were two things. It was the sauna. We started doing the sauna mm -hmm. regularly, yep. Yeah. And also potatoes. Interesting. And potatoes were a really good for him. For most for most people, because uh -huh. they're high in potassium, so they help really push that water out. At the same uh -huh. time, they fill your body up. Right. That's, yeah. yeah that's, I've never heard yeah. that. Before. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Uh -huh. it, it works really yeah, good. we tried oatmeal. We yeah. tried rice. I tried yeah. rice cakes. Rice cake blew my stomach, but the potatoes, man, they just. They fill me up, but then they basically, you know, they, they dry me out a little more when it comes to the show. So that was something again. And we did, we were doing rice and we were doing rice cakes and we were doing all the normal cakes. Penny cakes. <laughs> we were doing all the normal stuff for the first, you know, three, almost three seasons of working out, of, of actually doing competition. Mm -hmm. And we won some shows, we lost some shows, you know, we, we placed fourth and seventh and, you know, all these different things. But at the end of the day, I believe that every single time we stepped on stage, we got better. Mm -hmm. yeah. I truly believe that. Yeah. So, so every time you got on stage, you looked better than the show before. Right. 100%. Okay, perfect. 100%. So it was a gradual progression. Yeah. Regardless right. of placing, you were still getting better yeah. yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. and he had to get better. So yeah. he, he had a lot of body parts that he still had to bring up. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly why he wasn't winning the overall. Maybe he winning the classes, mm -hmm. but wasn't winning the overalls. Interesting. And one thing I thought was interesting, too, that you said that it was specific, specifically potatoes mm -hmm. that you noticed. Because everybody, it may be something, something different. different. 
it might be something different. So you guys, it just took you time yeah. to, to figure out what foods work mm -hmm. for you, and you can only find that out by, by doing trial it. Trial and error. You by gotta, trial and error. Gotta Mm -hmm. Yep, you got to experiment, and that's one. So we're we're you know we've done some experimentation, you know, say off season or mm -hmm. coming into the shows, to where we'll do like you know four or five hundred grams of carbs, burgers, you know, all sorts of different yeah. things. And burgers try. are good too. Yeah, yeah. Burgers are great, but uh, and and they, they do work for me because they have like like he says the burger has everything mm -hmm. that you need inside of it. it. Has the sodium, has the fats, has uh, carbohydrates and the, the bun. So it has everything you need. And then we add a lot more carbs with the potatoes and they, they, they really do well in my body, they dry me out. So but like I said, at the end of the day, we're trying to get better and better and the evolution or the learning process of, of competing has kind of brought us that way. But every single show we've gotten better, no matter what the placing was, we've gotten better personally. And no hardcore diuretics either. We use this nope. over-the-counter nope. diuretic, expel by nope. MHP, nope. that's it. It's the only diuretic we've ever used. Yeah, the, what I always said is if you have to depend on an yeah. extreme diuretic, you're not in shape. 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 you are not in um, what do you think that came from? Like, what what did you do differently? That's just training. Dude, it's been the last three years, four years of this guy pounding mm -hmm. on my body, and literally, I mean, we're talking with, to build my leg. We would do you know four or five plates on each side, and and I'm like struggling to hold it up, and he's like, all right, we got three three reps, and I'm going all the way down ass to grass, and I can't get up, and he's literally picking me up and kind of helping forcing. me along. He's forcing these reps. I mean, it's yeah. that's where that density's come from. Drop, and drop sets. Drop sets. I mean, working out, you know, mm -hmm. low carbs, no carbs, mm -hmm. you know, but that's been. And one key thing that it took him some time was being able to eat. Mm -hmm. In yeah. the beginning, he couldn't take in all those calories. Mm -hmm. So just in the last two years, he's been able to take in all the calories that he needs to actually help that body grow. Mm -hmm. That's been a huge difference. Yeah, I remember my, my first USA's, which was, so this is the third, though, two years ago USA, so 2016, when they first introduced Classic Physique. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in Vegas doing the thing, and I had to actually choose either to eat protein or to either to eat carbohydrates on the carbo. Because I couldn't, be, I literally physically couldn't eat both. Mm -hmm. The next year, it got a little better. And then this year, I mean, we're, we're just, you know, we can eat two burgers and three potatoes mm -hmm. in one sitting just to kind of get everything. And my body processes it. So mm -hmm. it, it's definitely a time thing. And that's one of the things that I have to stress. Like, I, I, was, I was kind of helping somebody at this last USA's and one of their, one of their, one of their, say, I would say qualms or mm -hmm. they didn't feel like they did as well, but they were like, man, I wanted it to get, do a pro show and I, or I wanted to do a national show in my first year mm -hmm. and win it. I'm like, yeah, so did I. But here it is four years later, and I just got it. Mm. So unfortunately, it takes longer time to get to where you need to go, especially when you're going against guys that have been doing it for five or six years. And you can't just jump on stage in your first in your first year. And again, it does happen. Some guys they do they do a local show, they do a national show, and they get pro, and then they they do that. But that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. The norm is grinding and building up body parts and making sure that you are a complete physique yep. versus just one body part. Interesting. So one thing I noticed is that you said you had to actually train your body to be able to eat more mm -hmm. over a longer period of time and train it to be able to consume those calories that you yep. need. Because I know a lot of guys, they'll come to me and they'll be like, uh, I tried Ronnie Coleman's diet and I tried to eat like 7,000 calories and I threw it all off. And I was like, yeah, dude, it didn't, he didn't eat that overnight. Like you have to grow into it. Your stomach yeah. has to yeah. be able to take all that in. So yeah. Your stomach has to grow a little bit in order to take in all that food. So mm -hmm. it just takes time. Yeah. yeah. So, so how did you start? You just eat as much as you could, and then just let it. Yeah, I would have it basically some like maybe twice a day. Mm -hmm. Have two big meals where you just stuff yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I say, dude, you got two meals. Just eat as much as you can, mm -hmm. and then let it digest. And then the, the other, the rest of the meals you need again. They're probably gonna have to be smaller. Yeah. And we just started from there. And I remember too that when we started doing that, I was the second year we started doing that. On those big meals, he would actually try to make me drink like a weight gainer shake on top of that during yeah. the off season. Uh, so then, on top of the my being full, like a half an hour later, I had to do a weight gainer shake. Wow! Yeah. So it's literally force, just like you're forcing the body to grow and make dense muscle, you have to force it to to be able to take in all these calories. And now, you know, four years later, you know, we're eating this last prep. We were I was buying four pounds of fish every about two about one and a half days. And that it would be gone. So basically, two two and a half pounds of fish every single day, and that's just you know the fish. That doesn't count. Sometimes we have burgers those days, and yeah. sometimes we have bison. So that's just just the lean the lean meats. Wow. But yeah, man, it just it just takes it takes a lot of time 
and a lot of just patience because you know I'm, I'm a personal trainer too so at the same time you know these people come in and they say they I want to look like you or I want to look like this or only like that and this person or me I've been doing this every single day for the last four years of my life right. and I've had a coach here so I have to tell you man it doesn't come overnight but those little those little successes they start building up and building up and building up and if you're patient one day again for me it's been the, my fourth year of competing I finally hit the the, the, the pro status that's awesome dude. and and so now I get to start over in the pro league and now uh, we're gonna do a show in September and you know we're gonna jump in we're gonna see how we do and if we do well great if we don't do well we have something to work on Man. but it's just it's just progressing every single time that I step on stage and you got there you what 12 more pounds you put on I can have so my weight limit right now at the at the division that I'm at is 212 pounds. Now I have the pro status, um, 222 pounds. So now I weighed in about 211.2 this last show. So How tall are you? Just under six feet. So like five. They, they measured me at fun, fun brother. Yeah, they measured me. At, <laughs> this guy's excited. Yeah, he's excited for the pain next year. But uh, I'm excited too. I mean, it's it's gonna be great. I'm, I really want to see where I stack up. You know, my goal, I told this to Reggie the other day, like my goal is by 2020 to be able to step on that Olympia stage. So I got literally two years to try to qualify. That's a realistic goal. And it's a realistic, it's not. Oh yeah, it, is. it could happen next year, but realistically, I think that if I, I get That's to where I need, yeah, yeah, if I get to where I need to be, that is a realistic goal, 2020, maybe 2021, but realistic, yeah. Awesome. You know, that reminds me of, I remember Dorian Yates said whenever he would get ready for contests, it was just, he would just stack a brick. Mm -hmm. Everything he did was just a, congress, yeah. a, a progression, yeah. so small steps that built this huge wall. Yeah. Um, so it's just doing the work every day and being consistent. Oh, now, man. what what motivates you to, to compete and train to an intense level? Like, what is your motivation? Well, one, I got this guy on my back. Um, okay, so but, that, to, but that's but that's not. I mean, you need a coach. I think that yeah, if, you got to yeah, have an inside too. I you, only do so much. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. But I would say, you know, that. So my first show, I came to Reggie. You know, he, he put me through the gambit. The gambit, the first four weeks. Oh, yeah. um, there was there was fifteen guys in my class, and this was physique at the time. And like I said, I thought I was ready, man. I ended up placing seven. Now there's there's. I always think there's two. Wasn't bad. Wasn't bad. Yeah. My first show. So it's actually, you only had a month to get ready for that show. Yeah, but at mm -hmm. the same time, there's there's two type of people. I think there's one where you get the fire lit under you and you want to do more. Mm -hmm. Number two is the person that doesn't necessarily think it's for them and they never do another show again. Mm -hmm. But the, I don't from from what I've seen in in the in sport, there's no half ass. There's not like oh I might do another show. Like you know in your mind if you are, if you want to do another show, and that's kind of what I'm. I'm very competitive, so I want to get better and better. Uh, and I want to make a name for myself in the sport, and the only way to do that is through hard work and dedication, and making sure that you're doing things correctly in the, in the sense of the sport. Awesome, fucking cool. Um, so, what is your? What do you have like a long term vision, or are you are you wanting to stay in the classic physique? Is that what you want to do, or do you want? Yeah, to, you know? I think so. I mean, I'm I'm 35 years old. I just turned 35, so I think for me, we've talked about going into the open, mm -hmm. but it's just not going to happen. Well, I have to be. Bars. Yeah, I'll have to be 250, 260 on stage because of my height, mm -hmm. and that's because I just, I just don't want to get that big. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy the classic division because it gives you the posing like bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you you know everything you need. You can get, I mean, I could get to 250 and then stuff to cut down to 22, mm -hmm. but I think at the end of the day, it's just a fun class, man. It, it is. No, well, yeah. Why do you think Reagan's coming down? Why do you right. think right. all these guys that are bodybuilders are coming to this class? Because it's it's. It's more competitive, but also you can show your personality. It's not like physique where you're just doing one or two poses. Mm -hmm. No knock on physique, right. but I'm just saying it, it is what it is. Yeah, it, there is more um, aesthetics to it, and you have more freedom with with how you can make yourself look without just having to be a mass monster to yeah. compete. Hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I like this. I had to be before they came, bro. Classic round. See, I started out as a bodybuilder. I was 194 pounds. I had to take myself all the way up to 250 some pounds just to be competitive. Just to compete on stage. As a bodybuilder, because I'm not, I'm tall, I'm about 5'11 myself. Mm -hmm. And man, the amount of food that I had to eat was, yeah, it was crazy. Me. I don't you know, know, just look back and I'm still 250 right now, but mm -hmm. I'm not near as the massive the size I had. But And I'm still eating a lot compared to most people. Right. Do you guys have any tricks to eat more? Just simple no, tricks. Just, no. You just have to fucking do it. You just gotta do it. Yeah, that, there's, I, mean, there's look, no I, had a, I had a coach when I first got into this sport. <laughs> I was probably like 200 pounds. <clears throat> he literally took me to Cuckoo Rules. And Cuckoo Rules was a long time ago. 
He ordered a whole chicken, that was like eight pieces or something like that, and four sides. Mm -hmm. So he made me eat all that. Mm -hmm. And I said, it took me an hour and a half to eat all that. And he said, you need to eat three more times like that. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that <laughs> shit was literally another part of my workout. That was like training my stomach to be able to take that in. Yeah, yeah. But over time, dude, is you know, the, but the stomach stretches out and you're able to consume more, more food. Awesome. Yeah. There, there's been times where he got, he's had me eat three double turkey burgers from Fat Burger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'll eat two and then I'll have to take a break. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. what you have to do. Yeah. yeah, just like you go hard in the gym, if you want to grow and you want to get more dense muscle, you got to feed your body. It's a big part of the sport, you man. You have to if do you it. You cannot eat, you can't grow. Mm -hmm. You no. got to be able to consume that food to be able to grow. Right. It doesn't matter how it's long. It's just simple. Yeah. It's just simple, man. One thing that I do normally, like if I get sick and I can't eat for a long period of time, what I always do to get back to it is I just get consistent with eating. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the portions yeah. aren't yeah. as big, but yeah. it's consistency yeah. and then the appetite will yeah. increase yeah. Well, well, over time. Sometimes I'll eat 10 times a day. We're exactly. Yeah. As long as I stay eating the same amount of calories. So that's exactly. another way. Yeah, that's just being another consistent way with eating yeah. times. Absolutely. And that's what we did, I think, the second year. We started to eat a lot more, um, mm -hmm. just more frequently, because I couldn't get the meals in it. In the, I was only eating maybe you know five ounces of, of protein at a time. Where now it's like eight, nine, sometimes ten ounces of protein at a time, if not more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just training. You have to train your stomach in order to process all that, and then your body will catch up. Definitely. And do you, as far as like craving bad foods and cheating and stuff, do you, does that bother you, or like how do you handle it? Like with me, I, I'm the kind of person who just say if I'm not gonna if I'm gonna do something. Then I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna cheat. Like fuck it. Yeah. Like I just don't do it. Yeah. But yeah. is there any psychological things that you yeah. do? I know some guys would watch the Food Channel and they would just like, <laughs> they would just I get would, off on the uh, food but not eat it. You yeah, know? I, I watch it and I shouldn't say this, but I, I have my fair share of yeah. uh, cinnamon rolls and shit. Yeah, and I, I think and sometimes you have to have a little bit of that it's just psychological. Mm -hmm. Every now and then you gotta give your body some of that. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this. So. From the very first year and second year to now, my cheat my cheat meals, mm -hmm. they're like oatmeal. Like yeah. oatmeal with peanut butter and carbs. Yeah. Yeah. Oatmeal and peanut butter. That's yeah. a cheat meal versus going and having, you know, a McDonald's burger or something like that. Cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. Cake. Yeah. yeah. So that is yeah. absolutely nothing for you. Exactly. So my they, they have changed and so I would say that in that aspect, I still crave the sweetness, but yeah. also but my, my decisions and what they're gonna do for my body has changed mm -hmm. because Again, you eat a cinnamon roll or you eat something like Cinnabon or something like that, it, it does nothing for you. But if you have, you know, some cinnamon protein powder with some oatmeal and a banana, a lot better choice. Yeah. Awesome. Because in the beginning, Nick was hiding a lot of shit from me. When we, really? When we first started, he was cheating a lot. Uh, yeah. There may or may not have been candy wrappers in my, in my glove box. I don't know. Like, what the fuck, dude? What is this shit? <laughs> hey, man. It's, 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 I'm hard headed. Sometimes it takes a little while for me to learn, but it's still. I mean, again, I still crave those things. That's a big part of the reason why your conditioning got so much better. That was insane. Because yeah. you stuck to the you stuck to the program more or better these last two years than you did in the beginning. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So was there any? So it sounds like maybe you built the mental discipline yes, just yeah. to, to oh, yeah. be able to do it. Yeah. yeah. Or, or you get tired of getting your ass kicked. Right. You're just <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that too. The yeah. desire to win is higher yeah. than oh, the desire to so. Yeah, and then and you see your body changing. I mean, we were talking about this the other day. Like, you see your body changing from year to year, but it's hard to see yourself when you're in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, last year, I mean, I thought I was ready at USA's, and I ended up getting seventh, which is a great placing, but I was hoping to leave my pro card. Mm -hmm. And then after winning my pro card this year, and going back and seeing those pictures and comparing them side by side, you're like, all right, now I see it. Yeah. So it's hard. It's hard to, to kind of see yourself in the moment. But if you have an open mind and you have somebody that is honest with you, like Reggie, thank you very much. He was always honest with me, man. Like he tells me what I need to do. Or yeah, I, I say, I, hey, dude, until you bring those calves up and get that better, that back more uh, definition into your back. Yeah, we're not gonna win overall. Not win that overall. It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's gonna keep. They're gonna keep digging you on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and this year, you know, our, our, we did the West Coast Classic. We did the, the Masters and the Open. We won both of those, and we won the overall. We went to Pittsburgh uh, National, won the, won the pro card first in our class. Uh, didn't win the overall, but at the end of the day, we're getting better and better every time. My conditioning, and so now we're gonna hopefully take this momentum, go to our first pro show, see how we do, and then we'll make a decision whether we're gonna really either, we'll probably take a break, most likely we'll probably take a break. But if, if we get top, shit, if we get top five, I might wanna do another one, just to yeah. get the points. That's true. But if we get top yeah. five, so again, I want to put I want to put my best foot forward. I'm going to do the same thing we've been doing, you know, grind it out for the next, you know, six to eight weeks, and then we'll see where we end up. But at the end of the day, it's just about getting better. Very cool. Um, 
So that, that's great info, guys. And so for the long term of like classic physique, I've noticed kind of like every year they kind of increase the weight. Well, yeah. What do you guys think about like I'll long term vision of classic? Yeah, yeah. What do you I, think it's I gonna love be? it. I mean, as long as they don't go too much yeah. with the weight, but I'm, I'm loving that they're increasing the weight because I think, especially for taller guys, mm -hmm. they need to be just yeah. a little bit heavier. Right. First, to just be able to fill out a yeah. damn frame. Yeah, right? yeah, because yeah. yeah, that frame alone, man, you need. Yeah. 220, 225, that's not bad. Yeah, you know? I, th I think. I think if they go with any, 230, yes, that's mm -hmm. top. From my height. But it's like, they don't need to go any heavier than that. Yeah, I, I think you get more into the bodybuilding realm. Yeah, I, I really think that where they're at now is, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think maybe if they did five more pounds next year or the year after for the pros and for the amateurs, it's going to open it up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's competitive right now. If you saw the USA this past weekend, man, there's... These guys in the C and the D and shoot A, B, and C class and D class, mm -hmm. all these guys, they look amazing. They all close. They all are very close, and they're all yeah. at the top of the weight limit. Yeah. But it, again, it keeps you competitive. So if a guy that is in the middle of doing you know classic physique or bodybuilding, he has to you know maintain that weight, or so to speak, or just like just like wrestling and other sports, we have to make weight. Yeah. You got to suck it up and just like just, go suffer. Like we got another guy that that went to national nationals with us. And he competed as a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. Now he's a heavyweight, mm -hmm. and he's about six feet, and he weighed in about two nineteen. That's yeah. just not. That's just not heavy enough. Because mm -hmm. he, he's tall, yeah. right? So he, he needs to be super heavy. Yeah. He needs to be about two thirty, but forty. If he's say. a if he's a pro, he can go to two twenty two at the same height. So I think that they need to make my only my only my only concern is that the, the ten pound difference between the amateurs and the pros is a very very big difference. Mm -hmm. I feel that when you win a national show or when you you know step off that national stage and earn your pro card, you should technically be able to jump into a pro show. Right. And I'm not saying win it, but be competitive. Right. But it's in the classic physique, unlike the physique and the bodybuilding uh, classes. Yeah. That's not that, that's not the way it is right. because of that ten extra pounds. I mean, that's a lot. So it takes. So I think. So I think ten pounds of muscle. So muscle yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think if they raise the amateurs five pounds, it gave them a little better chance and leave the leave the pros right where it's at right now. I think that would probably be the best thing. But again, what do I know? Awesome, man. That's some great info. That's. I still can't get over when I saw you in the in the gym. I was like, yeah, I think we met about what, two years ago when you first moved here. Yeah, it was a, it was about a year ago, and I, okay. I remember you looked great. And then I saw you this time. I was just like. Whoa! Like, yeah. What the fuck? Like your skin was like paper thin, yeah. and the muscles were dense. I was just like, wow, it's so awesome. And then you fucking won. Yep, yeah. that's so cool. So yeah. hard work, hard work pays off. Oh, there yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This, this is the guy I was just talking about. Here's the other guy. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, we've got a little extra time. Um, shoot them our way. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions for me personally, yeah. uh, and what's your Instagram? Man? It's N A B underscore F I T. And what's yours, Fred? You have an Instagram, don't you? Team Machine. Team Machine. All, all, all one word. He knows Team it. Machine. Team Machine. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's still on Facebook, guys. So he hasn't. He hasn't I'm covered all, it over. I'm an old guy. I run. I run, I run his account. But this guy, honestly, I mean, no, no knock on any of the other teams, man. I just really feel that I've gotten the the support and the one-on-one -on -one kind of uh, coaching that I really needed from him. I think that if I was with a bigger team or, or somebody, I might I might have gotten watched in the mix and there wouldn't have been a much, as much emphasis put on me growing. Because again, from that first year to now, it's been a long time. Pancakes, baby. Oh yeah, there you go, pancakes. Okay, so, so Nick, my closing question for you is yeah. what separates a champion mindset from just someone who's a competitor like what put you at number one what was the mindset that you had that made you win your pro card I mean I, I go up there to win every single time I mean I so wanna, you were a winner before before you even won right yeah I think so I mean I, it's, it's all one in here man there's there's times when I got to this you guys are at my gym but there's been times where I get up here at four o'clock in the morning and I'm on that bike and then clients start coming in at five and I've been here for an hour. Yeah, yeah. And then I go downstairs to the sauna downstairs and I go downstairs for another 30, 30 minutes. And that was happening, you know, six weeks prior to the show, if not a little bit longer. So I do the sauna sucks after an hour, hour cardio. Yeah. It, ain't, it ain't fun, but. Just willing to, really just willing to sacrifice and make the sacrifice that you need or work harder than the next person. Yeah. It's so simple, man. Just be most people willing to push it and go over that, you know, yeah, take, it, take it to the limit to the extreme. This is a strange sport. So mm -hmm. if you want to be up there and stand and be a champion, you got to be willing to go there, man. Yep. Where it hurt, where it's uncomfortable. Where it's uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. and I'd say, yeah, definitely take your uncomfortability every single time. And not, again, it's about training smart, but at the same time, that's the mindset you have to have. Mm -hmm. 
I, I always feel, even as an amateur, that I was at that level where these pros are at. So now to be able to, to be competitive with them in this next show is going to be a truly an honor. It's going to be freaking amazing. I'm, I can't wait for it. But again, for me, knowing what I need to work on, I'm going to come back and hopefully you know win a show next year. Like that's that's my mindset every single time. What can I do to get better? Mm -hmm. That's the fun part, man. Being able to go in the gym and take these weights and bring bring your body parts. Mm -hmm. To me, that's where all the fun's at. Oh yeah. When you get on the stage, that's like, okay. That's the, but the, the fun is the work is done inside in the gym. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mm -hmm. most definitely. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, that's so cool, man. I'm so proud of you. I'm, I'm awesome. I, just, I can't wait to see how well you do. I appreciate that. Um, you're going to be up there on the Olympia stage. Um, so, so, yeah. Hopefully soon. Oh, absolutely. Next two years. So, with, yeah, with that yeah. mindset, man, you can fucking do anything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Any questions real quick? Um, and that's pretty much it. We'll just wait a little bit. Anything you guys want to say to finish up with? No. Um, not really, man. I'm, I'm excited. Keep training. Keep training hard, man. <laughs> yeah. No matter what. Keep you know, training hard. There's going to be people that's gonna probably going to tell you that you can't do it, mm -hmm. but keep keep pushing. Yeah. If you believe in yourself, you got a goal that's, that you want to do, just keep doing it, man. Just don't give up. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be a lot of, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I won't get into too much, but there's been, this is the most... Uh, stress that I've had in comp oh, yeah. competing this yeah. last year. Yeah, I don't want to know about it, man. Yeah, 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 know. yeah. What do you mean? I don't know. Well, all right. Damn, we all so, can make it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so basically, you know, I, I moved from my house here in LA. Uh, me and and my girlfriend at the time, we went, bought, we were moving to Texas. I moved her out in March or in sorry in May. Ready? I came back yeah. here and was had been here since then, yeah. and then basically gonna, last I'm Friday, gonna, so yeah. basically three days before leaving see. for Pittsburgh. We're me and her talking, we break up. Mm -hmm. So now I got all my clothes, everything over in Texas. Uh, we broke up. I texted him on, on Monday and was like, I'm not doing the show. I can't do this at, at all. He's like, you're getting on the show. You're getting on the plane. We're doing this. In yeah. Pittsburgh airport, I, I had said, like. I told him, hey, dude, take a break. Yeah. Relax. Don't overreact. I said, dude, all we need is five or six days. It's five or six. We get through yeah. these five or six days. And I knew he had a really good shot of winning his pro card, and now he wanted to throw this chance away. And you may not get another shot. Right. This, this is the shot. Your body's peaking. Yeah, and I said, you may not get another shot, dude. This yeah. is your shot. Yeah. And, uh, and we, he calmed down, and we still got back on the prep, what he needed to do, and yeah. that's it. So, yeah, there's, there's been a lot of ups and downs, and this has been the most trying time in my professional career as a bodybuilder. But what do they say? Like, the pressure makes diamonds or something like that? Like, it, honestly, like that. it honestly does, man. Yeah. It really does. So. Yeah, there's been a, there's been some tough times, but I can't. And the West Coast Classic, you know? yeah. yeah, all the West that Coast. That was classes. challenging too. Yep, that was yeah. challenging. Yeah. You know, we again we came out, came yeah. over the overall, but yeah. I don't know, man. You have the mindset, you keep going no matter what happens. I think that you know this sport rewards you for your hard work, and sometimes rewards you for the trying times you're going through as long as you stay the course. You stay the course, and you overcome life challenges, yeah. and you yeah. don't let that get yeah. you off track. Because that right there, that's huge, man. Yeah. I know so many, myself, that would be such a challenge. I'd be like, you know what, I'll just wait until this passes over, <laughs> then I'll compete. But yeah. you said, fuck that, I'm going in. Oh, no, I, no. On. I said, I said, I'm not doing it. Yeah. He's the one that says, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're doing it. Yeah. So, and luckily, yeah. luckily, I had a teammate over yeah. there, you know, that really helped Damn. me. Yeah. That really helped me yeah. through this that, that time. So, man, it's you got to build a team, man. And that's, a, that's what I'm saying. You have training partners, you have, you have coaches, you have mentors, yeah. whatever it is, man. Get, right. get somebody... And surround yourself with good positive people. people, man. Yeah. Awesome, positive people. That's it. So awesome advice, guys. I appreciate you guys. Take so. care. Shoot us some messages if you have some questions later. I know this will go on the 24-hour story. Um, so later, if you watch this tonight and you have some questions, just shoot us some. All right, All right cool. guys. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Cool. Okay. That was great, man. That was awesome. I'm gonna save it and then I'll send it to you too. Okay, cool. Yeah, see you, man. You can see you calm down. <laughs>